In the wake of uh, sluggish economic recovery in China, that country's affluent are sending some money overseas, according to a New York Times story today. Chinese families spending on everything from gold bars to uh, very high-priced apartments in Tokyo. Let, is, let us bring in our Beijing bureau chief, Eunice Yoon. She is here in the U.S. It's great to see you. I'm sorry we're not in person, Eunice. Mm. It's been so long, but good to have you in, uh, in country, so to speak. Uh, what do you make of this story in terms of what you see on the ground or what it may say otherwise about sort of the sentiment right now of, uh, of many wealthy Chinese? Well, I was just checking online to see what type of advice uh, property agents are giving. And it is true that there are um, several agents as well as other people who are advising um, those who are interested in growing their money in property to go to Tokyo, Hokkaido, as well as Osaka. They're saying that this is a, a better investment than here. It, well, not here. <laughs> that's usually what I say, but in China. Uh, the other trend that's interesting, you'd mentioned the gold bars, and this is something that we've been tracking for a couple of weeks now, is uh, young Chinese, like Gen Z, that are much more interested in buying gold. And so what they're doing is that they're buying about 50 to $80 worth of gold, and that's usually in the form of a, of a gold bean or a koi fish or something else that sometimes it's, it's jewelry as well um, because they see this as a way to save for their future and something that's manageable. Chinese have traditionally loved gold, but this is something that we're seeing uh, much more. And it's interesting because it's, it's among young Chinese, which, um, you know, when I think of gold, it's usually been kind of the older set that's been interested, but uh, now you're starting to see a bit of a change. You know, Eunice, it's great, and it's great to see you. I know we get to see you later this week, which is really terrific. I want to uh, talk about the Executive Order 6102, which was for FDR, May 1 of 1933, where he confiscated America, your gold. You're an American. You had to give your gold to government. I, I, I find it hard to believe that the PRC is letting this happen when FDR wouldn't let it happen. Well, I think that the PRC would definitely want to make sure that there isn't this huge outflow of money. So we have seen that with capital controls or other um, ways in which they would crack down on illegal, say, money changers, for example. Um, but in terms of the gold, it's something relatively new, and it's not necessarily something that we're seeing this huge outflow of um, in terms of like real nuts and bolts of, of people suddenly opening up their luggage and then there's tons of gold in there. But one of the benefits of that I've heard too that of um, doing of investing in gold is that you could take those little beans and like the jewelry and just kind of sprinkle it around in your luggage and then head out. And now that Chinese can travel much more, it's seen as a a more palatable way to invest. I wonder if Costco, Costco has gold bars now you can buy. I wonder if they have Chinese Costco's. <laughs> the other thing, I, I, you know, you just I keep, I'm confounded by the government there. We did the Resolution Trust, the RTC in our country, and our, our government seized all these ne'er-do-well lenders. I mean, I often find that the PRC is considered to be anti-capital, so to speak. Our government's done things that they seem like not even capable of doing. When are they going to seize these these uh, property developers and just say, okay, listen, you're out, and we're and we're going to take it so that the the basis is new, and we're going to distribute it to to wealthier people who can buy these things and just just bring all these developers to their knees. Yeah, well, that's uh, not happening yet, just yet. Uh, the government hasn't wanted to take on that much of the responsibility and know that there's going to be a whole lot of uh, debt that they'd be taking on when they're trying to make sure that they don't have the same experience that they've had um, several years ago after the financial crisis, where they kind of got dinged by all of the, the investments and, and debt that they had, had um, racked up. So still kind of waiting to see what the government's going to do about the, about the, the real estate sector. But um, yeah, it's just uh, anyone's guess at this point. Eunice, Remarkable. great to, uh, great to yeah. have you over here. And, uh, you know, she sometimes she gets blocked out by the authorities. The there. I already got blocked they out today. Jersey, New York. I don't understand. How can they do that when you're here? I know because it, <laughs> I was talking with Joe and he was asking about Xi Jinping. And now that I just said that, it's I'm probably blacked out. I thought maybe they didn't have the power to do that when you were over here. <laughs> I wanted to ask you all these other. Well, it doesn't matter for our viewers. We hear it all. Uh, Eunice, thank you. Thank you. Uh, great to see you. Talk to you later. In many ways, the most important story in the world. I mean, this yeah. is a country that we all felt was going to be able to outgrow us endlessly. Maybe they outgrew us by building a lot of places that are just unnecessary. And they, I don't know, David. I mean, you, do you, uh, you want, it's like how you buy the Book of Lynch. Would you like to buy uh, nine buildings in well, some town that's uh, tier four? If you got to get money out and you want to, sure. You figure out a way. You want to buy some, a condo at one wall? You got one for sale? <laughs>